Do you remember when you were little, how the people around you, especially your caregivers, used words to solve their problems, to talk about their problems, regulate their own behavior and their own challenges and regulate the behavior of others? The words that the people around you used when you were little play a very, very big part in the private speech that you started to form in your preschool years. That private speech is basically an idea where we take words that we've heard others say as they are figuring out how to solve problems and also very much how to regulate others' behaviors. So this can be a, an adaptive way of doing this or maladaptive. This could be an aggressive and abusive way. There could be some kind of neglectful way or there could be assertive and um, positive ways that this happened, adaptive ways. So the words that were used by the more um, grown up people in our life specifically, those words then get transferred in progressive ways over into us as children. And that starts to form what's called private speech. So private speech is audible. Um, it's something that can be easily studied and it is shown to have a correlation with how children perform on tasks, how they regulate their own emotions, um, and how also how competent they are. So the more you are in your zone of competence, the more private speech is uttered. So there's a bigger volume of private speech. Um, so generally speaking, private speech is uh, very helpful for solving our problems. And children who use it who are label, verbally labeling what they're doing tend to perform better than, than children who don't. When it comes to selectively attending to things, the more that they are verbally uh, talking about it to themselves, the better they do as well. So it's generally a very positive thing. Um, but we do have to remember as well that some of the speech that might be very a very negative way of, of doing it can also get internalized. And that is the next phase. So the private speech is the audible way that we are talking and labeling, verbally labeling things that are we're trying to solve. This then gets transferred into inner speech, which, which is inaudible. It's a completely internalized form of verbal thought. And this inner speech plays a very big role in how we solve problems, how we are internalizing what's happening. So. Um, it's important for us to think about the words that we have heard as we grew up, that those have formed something within us. So as we, if we become a little bit more self-reflective, we might notice that there's certain kinds of dialogues happening as we try to regulate our own behavior or others or solve problems. And it can be helpful to expose ourselves uh, later in life as we gain awareness about this of people who are solving problems well, who are regulating their own behavior, who are helping other people regulate their own behavior in ways that we want to emulate, that we want to internalize. The more we expose ourselves to different words, the more those then become internalized into kind of an internal dialogue that actually can help us regulate our own internal state, our own behaviors. So think about the words that you heard growing up understand that you may have many unconscious ways of talking through things in your head without realizing you're doing that, of how you are dealing with something. Um, for example, very exaggerated, overgeneralized statements, if that was happening a lot in your household, like you never do this, you always do this, things, or you are a, and then a big adjective. Those are generic kind of statements. If you heard a lot of that growing up, that might be incorporated into your own thinking about yourself, that I always or they always, for example. So just have some sense of what you think likely were a lot of the dialogues and the, the words that you heard growing up. Take a, a, an inventory a little bit for yourself of those the kinds of words that you're using when you're trying to solve your own problems and expose yourself as best you can to people who are using a nice, nuanced, sophisticated, diverse kind of way of talking about it and who are solving problems and regulating behavior in ways that you would like to emulate and expose yourself to that in a, in a verbal way. So um, 
In terms of how you can kind of learn more about this, definitely cognitive behavioral therapy deals a lot with this. Um, and then just podcasts and blogs, um, videos that have to do with, if you can find words like inner speech, but even the cognitive behavioral therapies, they do a lot of this kind of work as well. So if you want to learn more about any of this, um, you can go to stephaniefay.com. I have all my articles there. This is also a big chunk of a chapter of my book, The Biomechanics of Communication. And we'll also be going into this in my seminar series, which is every Tuesday of the month. So um, I'll also be posting videos on YouTube every Tuesday. So make sure to subscribe so that you keep getting informed of all the different things that are happening and the different concepts that I'm teaching. Thanks for joining.